let me start this with a disclaimer. I'm aware that there is some dispute about just how many of the works attributed to Shakespeare he actually wrote. I'm afraid that I have not done much research on that. That's a different subject I won't be getting into here. I have developed an affinity for William Shakespeare. I have developed it in spite of the country I live in, the United States of America. Now don't get me wrong, the U.S. has a lot going for it. But for some reason, we insist on treating Shakespeare as a novelist instead of a playwright. There are sources that classify him as a poet, which has some truth to it, but most of the works credited to him are plays. Now I must explain this. You see, some of what Shakespeare wrote are sonnets, and they're pretty good. I don't recommend avoiding them by any means, but, and I'm really dating myself with this reference, a compact disc only has room for 1.25 hours of material, and it only takes two to hold every sonnet that Shakespeare wrote, although this makes for a surprisingly accurate fit. But let's not treat him as a novelist. I mean, there's nothing wrong with novelists when they're trying to be novelists, but William Shakespeare wasn't. Remember that the number one rule of composition is to know your audience. You see, a novel, if it's written right, can just be read. The party who writes a novel is writing it with readers in mind. They are writing it, asking themselves constantly, how are my readers going to take this part? How are they going to take that part? A play, on the other hand, is written to be viewed. The party who writes a play is writing it with an actual audience in mind. People who are going to watch it. When writing it, they are asking themselves constantly, how are my viewers, not readers, going to respond to this part and that part? So why in the world is the United States treating Shakespeare as a novelist? You see, I've been to a few college classes that assigned us scripts from Shakespeare plays. Now, a script can be useful if one is part of an organization that is trying to perform one of these plays. But otherwise, you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole. By this act, the class is trying to turn Shakespeare into a novelist. Into the novelist he was never trying to be, which is a disservice to him and sending the message to the student that Shakespeare is utterly beyond comprehension, and so they might as well not put any further efforts into understanding him, let alone enjoying him, which is a disservice to them, and cheats Shakespeare of otherwise many dedicated fans. What's more, these would-be fans lose out on an incredibly enriching experience. If you want to understand and enjoy Shakespeare, don't try to read a script he wrote. Don't try to read a script he wrote. Watch the play that it was written for. Or better yet, watch a movie adapted from that play. I'm given to understand that's pretty comprehensive. Every last one of his plays has been adapted several times over. As the old joke goes, I don't understand why Shakespeare is so popular. His work is full of clichés. Of course, that's funny because they were not clichés when Shakespeare wrote them. The influence of Shakespeare is what made them clichés. I guess I'm kind of rambling now. So I'll wrap this up by saying that I have put a complete list of Shakespeare's plays in the description, sorted by category. The most often quoted one is Hamlet, and the most well-known is Romeo and Juliet. But they all have merits, and the more you familiarize with yourself with them, the more you find direct quotes from them popping up in surprising places.